kind of, kind of want to offer a disclaimer, um, and especially for those who might be outside this room um, right now watching on the camera. But I will remind you that one of the things which I have chosen intentionally not to do in the last 12 years is to preach on events. It is my, my desire never to talk, talk about a specific event because, in my opinion, it distracts us from the gospel message, the gospel message of hope and grace. To focus on something that happened in the here and now distracts us from the overarching message that God has given us in Scripture through all time. But that's not because the events aren't important or aren't compelling. Rather, because what we see in the events of our society are often simply symptoms of a more foundational condition. And while addressing an event may feel good, the expenditure of resources at that event often takes away from the meaningful work of changing lives or an improved awareness of God's grace in the world. And yet we know from reading our scripture and from being people of faith over time that polarization exists in our world and has for certainly 5,000 years of recorded history, give or take, depending upon how you read Hebrew scripture. And quite frankly, polarization sells at least in modern times and in modern societies. I would argue that society has become more divided along lines which, again, in my opinion, and in the reality, as I understand it, have a very limited, long-range personal impact, at least from a societal perspective. Much of what we see reported in the news and see in our communities has roots in a truly antisocial network and ethics. Addressing the polarization can be a distraction from the work of being in community and working on the saving relationship that we have with God. And our scripture today is one which helps point out some of the things that we need to consider as we prepare for the end of the Easter season and the celebration of the birthday of the church at Pentecost next week. The life of faith in God and Jesus Christ is straightforward. Straightforward. Not specifically easy, but it is clear. Like the comment I made to a friend of mine, losing weight is very straightforward. Take in less calories than you burn, and you lose weight. And they said, yes, but it's not easy. I said, easy is not the point. It's clear how we get from here to there. And it's the same way with God. All we need to do is trust that God will provide the things that we need in this present moment and for all of eternity. However, we also hear that from John of Patmos and his reminder that the challenge for the faithful is to understand the world and the powers of discord that are there among us without getting caught up in the world without being swayed into the ways that the world believes. Because, in fact, the world will not understand Christians and, as a whole, will, under, will reject the hope of and in the person of Jesus Christ because it doesn't match the paradigm that we know and that God has promised for all generations. We heard... Christ pray today with the, that the disciples, and arguably that includes us almost 2,000 years later, and Christ prays that they and we will be one, that we will live united with others who very likely will only share a love of God. They probably will not be just like us, 
They probably we will not be of the same ilk that we are, but we share one important thing in common. The recognition of God at work in our lives leading us in the midst of the turmoil that is life on this fragile earth. Then that as we work together for the common good, we will in fact realize that each individual isn't lost. That each individual's importance in the world is important in God's creation. And that when we are in fact united, <coughs> as individuals with special talents and skills and abilities, the sum total of our talents will be united and amplified. Jesus reminds us in the prayer that he offered today that we are, that being united in Christ is beyond us as individuals or them as individuals. When we live together and share the functions of share in the function of the community at a greater level, we will in fact make a real difference. We will become empowered to look for and work on the root cause of dissolution as opposed to simply the symptoms. So as God and Christ call us to be one, what does that mean what do we think that means or how do we consider being one in this world? And how does that compare with what the world says? Well, we know from experience the world says me first. To be one, I am all that matters. Those who aren't like me are not worthy of the benefits of the society that we live in because I am what is most important. We also know that our society believes firmly that anything that somebody else has has been taken directly from me or prevents me from having everything that I need or probably everything that I want. And the world continues to say that there is nothing that is out of bounds to get what I think that I deserve. And yet God, the person that we come to come here to worship and to learn about today, says we as humanity are best when we share a common purpose. God reminds us time and again that we are greater than our individual powers and strengths. God reminds us today and always that power, and that is the real power that life-giving spirit is found in gathering those who are not like us to form something greater than the individual that has many gifts. And that the strength that to survive is found in people working together for something that is probably of little tangible and ben little tangible benefit to the group. The work that we do here today is probably something that we will not see the benefits of today or tomorrow or the next day. But we will, in fact, recognize God's presence among us. I think that one of the things that this scripture helps us to be reminded of in much of the troubling part of the most recent events in our world, that much of the trouble in our society is the inability to see others as worthwhile, to celebrate diversity, even when we feel overwhelmed by the things and people that we are unfamiliar with. The, the, our society does not understand nor embrace that to, to be one who is a leader and to be one who builds community is to be a beacon of understanding and concern the Christian is focused on being with and exploring the worth of others in God's eyes, of those who feel overrun and unworthy. God invites us in these days to look for opportunities to be an example of God's grace and love to those who feel unloved. We were positing recently about 
those events which have been happening recently. And one of the common threads through these horrendous events of our society is that many of the perpetrators come from broken families and places where others aren't held in high esteem. And that's not specifically a failing of the person, but it's a failing of our society. Obviously, we are called by God to be united. So my question to us today is, how do we create unity? Practically, we don't. We're not the ones who create unity. God created all to be united, to be unified with one purpose and one cause. But what we can do is to facilitate being united one to another. We need to understand enough about God to help others recognize God at work in their lives. We need to be present enough with God and our community to build and enrich our mutual relationships with God. We need to reach out and help others explore their unique gifts that reflect God's presence in them and in others. We need to look for those who need somebody like us, not because we're better, but because we are more aware, to walk with them as we, as a group of people, grow into what God has called us to be. That is hard work, don't get me wrong, as just like losing weight, the work of God is simple, not easy. And yet as we work to find unity, our job is one which will enrich us and make us feel whole. And while we do this, it's not our job to find how the pieces of the puzzle that is God's kingdom fit together. It's to simply trust that God is in, uh, in us and in the midst of us, and then God knows how all the bits and pieces fit together to make a better relationship and a better functioning community. What we can do as we move forward from here is assure us and them and all of humanity that we fit together as a community united in one purpose. By building community and unity, beginning here, we will make a difference. We do it one person at a time, reaching out from this place and trusting that God will lead us where we need to go, being the people that God needs us to be, doing the simple work of being related one to another. Being united doesn't mean being just one. Being united means having a common purpose today and for forever. Amen.